Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope that you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. First up, in a recent interview on CNBC, an economics professor at Yale who goes by the name of Robert Schiller, who is famous for having had other interviews where he proclaimed that Bitcoin was without a doubt a bubble, has now admitted that he doesn't actually know what to make of Bitcoin anymore. This comes just a few months after another interview where he proclaimed that the entire reason Bitcoin is where it is is because of its name, stating that without going into much detail as to what he said, Bitcoin has no value at all unless we give it value. Other things like gold and silver at least have value even if other people don't use them as an investment. But in the end, like many other people who have claimed that cryptocurrencies will soon be a thing of the past, he admitted he thinks Bitcoin will eventually collapse, but this might not happen for another 100 years. Meaning, in essence, he has opened up a 1,200-month window where Bitcoin could collapse and then he'd be proven correct. Good job. Next up, the former U.S. Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation chair, that is the FDIC, her name is Sheila Baer, said during a recent interview that there is absolutely no precedent to ban Bitcoin as an asset. But she believes that down the line, digital currencies do need to have some sort of regulation placed on them. Um, on her interview on the TV show Fast Money, she stated that the U.S. isn't in the market of banning assets, but she thinks without a doubt regulation is necessary, like many other people have said in the past, to stop money laundering as well as stopping any potential for market manipulation, which has been the case over the last few months with members of major banks in the U.S. as well as what just happened in South Korea. So on this front, I would agree with her. She noted that during the interview that she thinks that the CBOE and the CME's futures launch was a good thing as it gives the government a window into the world of crypto, if you will, and allows them to potentially stop manipulation that could be taking place. At the end of all this, she mentioned that she thinks one of the main issues now is that there are a number of people who are attracted by the idea of quick high returns without actually understanding what Bitcoin and other digital currencies are. And on that front, she could not be more correct. Last up, in adoption news, the economic minister of Switzerland, his name is Johann Schneider Amann, has said during a recent interview, as well as during a recent speech at a crypto finance conference in the country, he thinks that Switzerland should work hard to become the crypto nation, as he calls it, adding that the country should look deeper into the technology and find out if it is directly beneficial to the future of business and to the future of jobs within Switzerland. He said that it's far too early to say that cryptocurrencies require any level of, of regulation. And he thinks that the reason banks have dismissed cryptocurrencies thus far is that over the last few years, they have uh, they've done so for professional reasons because they've realized that digital assets are actually uh, a direct threat to what banks stand for. He finished it off by saying that the newly formed blockchain working group will be working towards recommendations as to where the new technology might lead the country. Alrighty guys, that is definitely going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys are having a great day wherever you are, wherever you might be. And yeah, I will talk to you all soon. See you.